My name is Ian Goodfellow, I'm a partner at Panorama Design Architects. An effective healthy building is one that you go in and you just feel right. You, you feel air movement on your skin, you um, are drawn, you have uh, middle distance, long distance views out, good focus on, um, on activity, able to see things clearly, but your eye is not continuously constrained, your eye can flow. Uh, often in educational environments there was a fear that uh, your children shouldn't be able to see out windows, um, shouldn't be disturbed by other things moving, but actually people have found that that's not the case. It's actually the quality of the teaching that's going to keep the focus rather than whether there's views out the window or not. And uh, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a very intuitive thing, but I think the quality of, of a good building is that we have, to, we have to respect ourselves. We have to create environments that are, that are worthy of, of us. Daylight and ventilation are essential to the design of learning environments because they're really how we are, how well we feel in space. If you're... Obviously, there, there's... Um, build up of CO2, there are things which actually make us fall asleep. We all know that. But there's also other factors. There's the quality of the changing, changing um, environment. Light quality, play of sunlight, all of these things are about activating our minds. And I think in those environments, if you get the adequate ventilation and daylighting, without that dynamic uh, movement of air and movement of light, you've also lost something. So I think generally, uh, in designing schools, it's absolutely critical to get air quality and daylight right, but then in addition to that, you need to think about how do you make that environment dynamic so that you then uh, encourage more dynamic learning. Well-being is something which is, which is just identifying really um, that we are all humans, that actually we've developed, we've evolved in natural environments, so that when we're designing what you could say are artificial environments, the many of the, the, the buildings, um, we still need to connect with the outside world as much as possible. Obviously if it's, we're in the middle of a city and it's actually quite a toxic city, you've got to think about how to, how to, do with, how to deal with acoustics, air quality, etc. But I, it, it is also interesting that um, if we don't look at air quality carefully, we can also seal ourselves in with all of our own toxins that are in, in the internal environment. So we really need to continue to, to understand these things and to, to not get um, over-obsessed with one direction or another but to continue to develop our understanding, simulate as best we can natural environments internally um, and, and to enjoy the delight that we have in the natural environment as best we can in our constructed environments.